Okay, so again, we are looking at, let me see if I can get this to, there we go. Again, we're looking at both um, deformation and um, equilibrium with statics, and we have to remember we have to draw both. We have to start with both equilibrium and look at deformation. Um, but again, I like to like just summarize all of my material properties before I get started. So over here we have bronze. And um, our modulus is 100 times 10 to the 9th pascals, which is a newton per meter squared. Again, I like to put everything in newtons and meters so that when I go with my equations, I don't have to do any conversions. Okay, And it has a cross-sectional area. So our area is 300 millimeters squared, so that's going to be times 10 to the negative 6, okay, so that we can get it in meters squared. So we have to divide by 1,000, divide by 1,000, okay. We have link 1 has a cross-sectional area. Link 2 has a cross-sectional area. So here we have, so this is, we're going to call that 1. Actually, I like to call it A, and this is B. We have 450 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared. We have an applied load of 70 kilonewtons. We want to determine the uh, rigid beam deflection at point B. So we want to find delta at B. Also assume that links are circular and we are going to find a new diameter. So um, the reason I said this is so we can go back and use Poisson's ratio. And we're going to use 0.316. But I know some of you are still struggling with, um, I know they're square looking. We're just going to assume it's circle so we can just go back and find diameters. Okay. Um, so bronze links one. So this one is also bronze which means it has a modulus of 100 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, we have an initial length of 1, 2, 3, 3 meters. We have an initial length of A of 2 meters. So this is B. And I think that's all of our given so far. So we want to determine the delta B. Um, so the first thing I always do is start with equilibrium. When in doubt, free body diagrams that we would use for statics. So in statics, if we saw something like this, we would know that we had a force here at C and a force here at A holding this up, that we would put our 70 times 10 to the third newtons, because again, everything in newtons and meters, we would have 1, 2, 3, 0 0.92 meters and 0 0.54 meters. And we need to be able to find the uh, force that is in both of these so that we can find our deltas. Because if we want displacements, um, displacements are deltas. So here's my equilibrium. Now we're going to go with our deformation. Okay. So when I look at this, I don't necessarily know which way this is going to come down and tilt. Um, it's either going to, to be longer over here and shorter here and tilt like this, or it's going to be longer on this side and tilt like that. I do know that this one has the larger area, okay? They're the same, um, they're the same material, which doesn't matter here, but they have different lengths and they have different areas. So I'm going to start with statics to see which one um, has the higher force so I can just kind of quickly calculate which, which way I want to draw my deformation. So let's sum the moments about A. And I get 70 times 10 to the third times 0.54 meters minus FC times 0.54 plus 0.92. This mess equals zero. If I can calculate correctly, I get 25,890 newtons. And then I can sum forces in the y direction. And I have force A minus 70 times 10 to the third plus 25,890 uh, 25, newtons equals zero. So my force at A has to be 44,100 newtons. So there's the force at A, and here's the force at C. And I know that when I look at delta, it's PL over AE. This is almost twice, plus it has the smaller area, 
So we're going to go draw, go ahead and draw a deformation so that it looks something like this. So the bar comes down, it started out up here, and we load it and it starts to come down, but we are lopsided in our loading, so we have more delta. So I have delta C, and I have all of this is delta A. But for similar triangles, I know that it has to come down rigidly for delta C, so this little piece of my triangle has to be delta A minus delta C. And if I look at B, this whole thing is delta B, but when I look at my triangle, I have delta B minus delta C. I also have 0 0.92, 0 0.54 meters. So if I look at similar triangles, okay, and I come across, then, um, I can look at this and I can, here's my little triangle, I can say that delta B minus delta C is 2.92, so that would be this triangle, delta, so I have delta B minus delta C is to 0.92, and then when I look at my big triangle here, coming all the way across, I have delta A minus delta C is 2 all the way across, so I have 0.92 plus 0.54, okay? So that's my relationship between here and here. Well, I don't have a load at delta B, so I, I don't really know how to solve for that, but I do know how to find delta C because that's where I have a cable, so I can... PL over AE. Um, I actually have a load at A, so I can calculate that delta, and then we're back at C. So if I look at delta A, and I have the force at A, length of A, area of A, E of A, I can quickly sub in 44,100 newtons, and I have a length of 2 meters, and again everything is newton meters, I have 300 times 10 to the negative 6 meters squared, and then my E is 100 times 10 to the 9th, and everything is in newtons and meters, so I can find that delta A is 2.94 millimeters. I assumed it to go down, I got a positive value, so it goes down. Um, it was smaller than this, but I multiplied by 1,000 to get it back out of meters into millimeters. And I can do the same thing here, force of C, length of C, area of C, E of C, and I have 25,890 newtons. Um, I have a length of 3 meters. I have an area of 450 times 10 to the negative 6, and I have a modulus of 10 to the 9th. And when I multiply this out, I get a super tiny number. Divide or multiply by 1,000, I get 1.726 millimeters and I got a positive value so that indeed goes down. Okay and delta A is much larger than delta C. So I can come back up here and I have delta C is 1.726 and I have all of delta A is 2.94 and then I can find these little nuggets. So delta B I don't know minus delta C 1.72 divided by 0.92 equals delta A, 2.94 minus delta C, 1.72 divided by 0.92 plus 0.54, and I get that delta B equals, it equals by magic, <laughs> it equals by magic 2.49 millimeters down. Okay, so I have 2.94, 2.49, and then 1.72. So that's the displacement down. And honestly, what should be the first thing I check before I do all of this rigmarole? Always, always check your yielding to make sure we are in the elastic region. 
the stress of A equals the force of A, area of A. So we would have 44,110 divided by 300 times 10 to the negative 6. 44110, 300 e to the negative 6. And I get a ginormous number, so I need to make that smaller. And I get stress A is 1470 megapascals, which would be 1.47 gigapascals. And I would need to make sure that was less than yielding of my bonds. Um, I also know this would be the higher stress because it's the higher internal force. It also had the smaller area. So this would be the one that I would need to check first for yielding. If it's fine, then C is fine. But I'd need to go to my charts and check to make sure that we didn't yield. If we yielded, we'd have to approach this problem a little bit differently. Okay? So now, now that I have found things, we are going to go back up here and I'm going to erase this. And we are going to talk about the new diameter of link 1. So, this seems to be a really sticky part on how do I find the new diameter. So, let's just do that. So, I know that Poisson's ratio is negative lateral strain, longitudinal strain. Lateral is my cross-section in this case. It is the dimension that I'm not applying the force directly to. When I apply the, the, the um, force here, it's through that longitudinal axis and it's getting longer in this direction. Because it happens to be getting longer because of this force, we're also decreasing that area, that diameter, but it's like a consequence to that axial load. So longitudinal is direction of load or our direction of force, okay? And what is strain? Strain is change in length over length, okay? Strain, that longitudinal strain, is change in length longitudinally over our longitudinal original length. So our delta, when we're looking at, what did I say we were going to change? Link 1. So delta A is 2.94 millimeters. And our original length is in 2,000 millimeters. Then our strain is going to be 2.94 divided by 2,000 and I get 0 0.00147 millimeters per millimeter. That's my longitudinal strain. Change in length over length longitudinally. So now I can set this into Poisson's ratio. 0 0.316 equals negative lateral strain divided by 0 0.00 147 longitudinal strain the direction of my delta the direction of my load cross multiply and I get that that lateral strain okay let's swap and drop swap and drop okay so I'm going to multiply this by 0 0.316 I'm going to take my negative to that side so my lateral strain is negative 0.0004 6452. Again, it should be negative because we're getting smaller. So I know conceptually if I'm getting longer, then my diameter is getting smaller. What is strain? Negative 0 0.00046452. What is strain? Strain is change in length over length. But this time we're looking at lateral which is diameter, okay? That is my diameter, okay? So I'm gonna have a diameter final minus diameter initial over diameter initial. It's still just strain, change in length. Well, what was my initial diameter? And please don't tell me, I don't know, we weren't given an initial diameter. We were given, guess what? We were given an area of 400 millimeters squared. And I know that for a circle, pi over 4 d squared is how I get an area. So my original diameter was 450 times 4 divided by pi. 
square rooted, and I have an original diameter of 23.9365 millimeters. Okay, so I come down here for my original diameter, 23.9365, 23.9365. So my original diameter was this. I have a negative strain, and I want to find final, because strain is just change in length over length. It doesn't matter if I'm looking longitudinal or lateral. So I'm going to take that negative strain, I'm going to multiply it by my original diameter, and then I'm going to add, because it's negative here, bring it to this side, 23.9365 plus, and I get a new diameter of 23.925 millimeters. So I went from 23.93 to, well, 937 to 23.925. So it did get smaller. If I wanted to calculate that area, I would square it, and I would multiply by 5, I mean pi, and divide by 4, and somehow I messed that up. Let's do it again. 23.925 squared times pi divided by 4, and I get 449. So... I lost a very small amount. I went from 450 meters squared to 449.567 millimeters squared. Okay, so you just have to remember that strain is strain is strain. Strain is strain is strain. Strain is just change in length over length. It doesn't matter if I'm looking at this change in length, okay, or if I'm looking at an area, let's do it this way, an area that's becoming smaller and I have this change in length. Strain is strain. Longitudinal, lateral. Relationship, Poisson.